today we're going to talk about the um, three primary small arms of the um, Irish Army, from the Free State Army through to uh, the Republic's Army, or uh, I'll got in the air, and, which would be the uh, volunteer of Ireland, I suppose. Anyway, we started off, became a Free State in 1922, and most of our weapons were short magazine Lee Enfield's number one Mark III's. Uh, they were taken from British stores, or they were provided as aid. Um, you can identify these rifles through a number of ways. First way is the um, serial number, such as what you'd see at the top of the nose cone here, would be struck out. It might have a CR or it might have a GR for George's Rexus or whatever the name of the king was when uh, they were making the rifle. And they'll strike it out with the right EOR underneath, and that says it's been downgraded and sent off to the mix in Ireland. So, anyway, this is a, a 1916 number one Mark III star. This was an, a uh, rifle that was built during the First World War, obviously enough. The star denotes that it's been simplified quite a bit for machining. No um, windage adjustment here in the backside. No magazine cut off. A um, couple other bits and pieces like that. Anyway, let's talk about this. It takes a 10-round uh, box magazine. These aren't really meant to be taken out like this because uh, when they're actually full of rounds, the feed lips are just a bit too small and, you know, if you press the magazine sides, they'll, they'll, the rounds will pop out. But uh, you could pull them out for when you were presenting your rifle to show that it was unloaded or for cleaning or whatever. So we pop that back in there like that, 10 rounds. It's a, a cock on closing bolt. That means as you close the bolt, if you look at the back here, this is the cocking piece, gets left behind and on the spring tension. You then pull the trigger and uh, the round goes off. If uh, the round didn't go off, you had a light strike or it had a bad primer, you could actually pull it back out like this again and uh, do a second strike. That happened quite a bit. You'll notice people that have Pakistani ammunition and stuff like that, it tends to have what they call hang fires, where you need to uh, either it takes two or three seconds after the primer gets hit or it doesn't go off and it needs a second strike. So you can like have a second strike. You got your safety over here, click, that's on safe, that's on fire. You have a stripper clip uh, loading bridge, I actually have stripper clips. This is uh, what a stripper clip looks like, or in the parlance in England, uh, they, they, they would call it a charger, charger rifle. Pull the bolt back, put it in, and then press down like this and they'd strip into the actual magazine. Each magazine will take two. 10 rounds. So how do I know that this one served with the Irish Army? You know, I can't exactly look up the serial numbers or anything like that. Well, after we took uh, possession of these, to actually um, moved my uh, after we took possession of these, uh, we wanted to prove them and show that they were Irish uh, property. So uh, what we did was we put a bit of a stamp right here on the barrel. And the stamp is kind of neat. You just pop that right off, flew away there. If you can come in here and see, it looks like two F's on top of each other inside a circle. FF. That stood for Fina Fall. Which, uh, it's all blurry. It's all blurry, so let's have a look again. You know what? We'll take a picture of it and we'll put it up as a still. Okay. Anyway, FF stood for Fina Fall or. Soldiers of Destiny, not the political party that we know today in Ireland. So it had a rear sight graduated to uh, 2,000 yards, which is just over a mile. I think a mile is 1,760 yards or something like that. I'm not metric in euros, so unsure. Um, what else? It had your standard uh, sling pieces. And this here, you'll notice there's a, there's a break in it. That's a stacking swivel. That's when uh, you'd see those old pictures. You'd see three rifles stacked in a pyramid. Well, they'd hook these in a certain way and they'd be all self-supporting them. Got your bayonet lug here and here. A, uh, I think a pattern 1907 bayonet, which is a big long sword of a thing, would fit on the end. So that was our first rifle. We um, had that true until the mid 40s, early 50s, when we switched over to the number four Mark II. And I have a representative example of this. It was actually a rifle that was unissued. 
So here we go. It's been shot a few times, but as you can see, it's pretty much in as new condition. Now this has got the same detachable box magazine. It's got the same top on closing bolt design. You can see it's a quite a quick design, quite a quick uh, bolt throw action. Uh, trained marksmen could do uh, 30, 35 rounds in one minute. They call it the marked, uh, the uh, mad minute with one of these and that would be uh, all shots hitting a uh, 12 inch gong at 200 yards. Amazing. Thanks. Now this is a bit more sophisticated than the wartime expedited rifle I've just shown you. This has a flip up micrometer rear sight where you can move the actual sighting aperture at the back here all the way up and down. This one is graduated out to a more realistic 1300 yards. So you can put it all the way up like that. So I'll put it up to 1300 yards so you can see how you would sight it. Takes a bit of a while to get up there. And then you look through a hole right here in this moving slider here. And uh, obviously enough, the higher it goes, the more you have to tilt up the muzzle to get the front blade into the center of that sight hole. And uh, that will give you a trajectory like this with the arc back down again. So it's graduated for the um, 303 round, of course, where they have uh, fairly controlled truck pressures and they can tell you how far, if you were at this angle, how far it's going to impact that. It's got a uh, much wider battle sight here. This has got a bigger hole, so your accuracy is going to be uh, not as good, but it'll gather more light, so it'll be good for, you know, nighttime fighting or for uh, uh, low light conditions or just quick target acquisition. It's uh, got a different nose cap, as you can see here. It's got a portion of exposed barrel as well. It does take a bayonet, and I have an example. Unfortunately, this is a World War II bayonet, not correct for this. This is what the Tommies called a pig sticker. And that will become self-evident in a second. It was basically just a metal spike like that, and you could stick it into the hun or the pig or whatever. Anyway, uh, the correct one for this is more of a kind of blade. But uh, that's that. So we had that, I think, up until the Congo. I believe our boys, when they were, were killed in the Congo, were actually uh, killed to uh, have their rifles taken from them by the, by the natives there. And uh, we then decided we had to move on to a self-loading rifle, as the British called it, or a semi-automatic automatic rifle. And we came up with something like this. This is an FN FAL. This one is slightly different to what the Irish Army actually had. I've been looking high and low to get the proper parts that the Irish Army used, but I think most of them have been dumped into the ocean now. I don't think they were ever going to sell them into the uh, civilian market because they were select fire, meaning they could go full auto or semi-auto. So anyway, this one's been dressed up, as you can see, with a bit of a Russian scope on top. It's got a 10-round box magazine with a detachable release. I've got a set through through that to stop me from releasing the magazine right now because I'm in California. But uh, as soon as we cross the border into a freer state, uh, you can just back that screw and use a regular magazine release. It takes a 308 or 762 times 51. And that's how it operates. It's a straight, uh, it's a straight um, short stroke, kind of like an SKS almost, tilting bow back, where uh, your gas comes up here through a gas nut, uh, through a regulator here. You can change that for the quality of ammo you're using or whether the rifle is filthy or not. And then we'll operate a short stroke piston, which will just bang this bolt carrier back just enough to unlock it. And then the uh, residual pressure of the cartridge will drive the whole thing back like that, ejecting the round and stripping the next one forward and ready for the next. We've got safety on the side here. Safe fire. And... Uh, as I said, a Russian scope that I put on and a uh, scope mount top. It's uh, fairly accurate, good for about 1.5 inches at 100 yards. It's got a uh, nice um, muzzle brake here on the end and uh, of course a bayonet attachment as well. And uh, we used that I think up until 1988 where we switched over to the Steyr AUG, I believe A2, it might be A3. I have to uh, come across one of those and add that to my collection so I can be current. But uh, that's all we've got for the meanwhile. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.